your dog who's impaired in terms of executive functioning, kind of judgment. Someone who has impaired judgment may not be able to tell you that the likelihood that she's going to die next year, given that she's perfectly healthy, um, is very low. So kind of treatment, um, treatment considerations. in general, either positive or negative, can be stressful as well, just because, you know, we're all so used to the status quo, so I'm not sure if, um, if it's a matter of just a transition, like having changes in your life that's stressful, say, leaving your work and stepping into retirement in and of itself, no matter how good it is, um, is stressful, or is it, you know, really having a negative experience that triggers the anxiety? some depression. <laughs> Definition of a major depressive episode. There's a period during which there is either depressed mood or loss of interest in activities that were once pleasurable. And this happens nearly every day, most of the day. And then in addition, there have to be at least four uh, other symptoms, either weight up or down, sleeping too much or too little, at psychomotor retardation or psychomotor agitation, so either extreme on each of these, or feelings of guilt, or indecision, uh, sort of inability to concentrate, or thoughts of death. So at least four of those in addition to the funnel question. So that's the DSM criteria for depression. And as we noted before, rates of depression go down with age. So this, these, um, this is CD data, the screening questionnaire, CIDI. And the, this is from some data we gathered at Sweden. Kristen Southern is a um, Terrell PhD graduate, worked on this. And you see the same picture. It's just uh, that. Rates go down with age, and maybe there's a little upturn with age, or maybe not, but generally we're down with age trend. And this, this would be 12 month prevalence, so comparable to what you've seen before in the other studies. So, again, uh, 
prevalence of major depressive disorder in community <coughs> samples tends to range from 1% to 5%, and this is found across different countries, and this in the numbers tend more often to be at the lower end of that range, so more like 2%. There are other categories of depressive disorder. Most of the studies of mood disorder have focused on major depressive disorder. But what I want to point out is that if one looks at the continuum of disorders, for the most part, the same kind of risk and protective factors, the same kind of differences in presentation, the same kind of consequences seem to adhere to milder forms. So we're, we really are talking about a dimension, not a, a set of uh, different disorders. The CESD, Center for Epidemiologic Studies Depression Scale, is one of the most commonly used instruments to measure rates of depression in the community. And averaging across different studies using the CES, in general, somewhere around 15 to 16 percent of older adults will score at above a clinical cutoff, indicating clinically significant presence of symptoms of depression. Was there that a question? Yes. Was sorry. Actually, that, since you got the CESD, I was wondering, do you do you think that's a good representative of like? DSM diagnosis of depression? No, the CESD is not. It's a good representative of the continuum. Gotcha. So rates of major depression are running this 1 to 5 percent. You've got this continuum where 16 percent have clinically significant symptoms. Enough symptoms, somebody should pay attention and probably think about intervention. So there's a huge number then of folks who have something sub-syndromal. Yes. Thank you for asking. And rates of symptoms and rates of disorder will be quite different across different settings. So what I've been talking about so far is just a community setting. But if you start going to medical outpatients, people in the hospital, people in long-term care, rates of symptoms, which is this top bar, or rates of disorder, which is this little bottom thing, all go up across settings. There are distinctive differences in the presentation of depression in older adults. There's differences in risk factors, which we will turn to next, next, but first let's pause on the differences in presentation. In presentation meaning what symptoms are brought to the table. So depressed older adults are less likely to endorse the affective symptoms. So some people talk about older adults as having depression without sadness. Older, depressed older, older adults are more likely to show the cognitive changes, so inability to concentrate. More likely to have the somatic symptoms, the disturbed sleep, disturbed appetite, and more likely to have loss of interest. So one intriguing little tidbit is when the DIS was used back at the Epidemiologic Pension Area Survey, try to figure out who would, would, whether there was depression. There was one funnel question. It was a sadness question. And if you said no to that, you didn't get asked the rest of the depression symptoms. Whereas with the CD, there's two funnel questions. You get a chance both with the sadness question and with the loss of interest question. So that this makes the CD a much better way to screen for depression in older adults. Another way this has been looked at, this comes from Joy Newman, and other people have proposed similar systems with similar names, but I, I kind of like her name. She distinguishes between a depression syndrome and a depletion syndrome. And so the kinds of things, these are all symptoms that go into depression. It should look familiar to you now. But a depletion syndrome 